And stay up there! Okay, so I literally spent all my money on getting Riku the survivor. Which I'm hoping is going to help me survive. Funnily enough. Nothing I can add to it now that will make it any better, I think. So we'll leave it at that. I need to head back to the Sacer and save. I'll probably pill for a bit of gill along the way. Because I literally have zero gill left now. Okay, so let's take a look at the situation once again. Saw everything. Now. We're not going to need this, I think. I want to see if it's worth making some stronger armors. Status-wise, I mean, we had an unblockable sleep. We had zombie and we had death. So... And we had Doom. Can't protect against Doom anyway. Yeah, so if you don't... I'm trying to think, like... Even Death Ward is not really that useful here, because if you don't get hit with Death, you're going to get hit with, hit with Doom anyway. So, I'm not... So I'm not too confident about it. Now, I'm thinking for Auron, should I use up some of these very precious elixirs in order to have him be the tank of my dreams? Because we don't have any stone-proof, poison-proof requirements... And we do have an extra free slot here for something else, should we want it. I think I might sacrifice here and really beef him up. I think he, he just needs it. And I stole an elixir last time so I can get at least one back through that. I'm not sure what I'd put on the final slot. <laughs> SOS Shell... It's just is a bit too specific to this battle. I mean, it's nice, but I will use that as like a another last last resort. I think zombie ward, death ward. Mm. No, not for now. We'll leave it at that. So, how much HP does that give Auron? 5,500. That's looking pretty healthy. Um, okay. I feel like Riku, if she's going to be doing this whole thing, she needs to be up as high as possible. Got to give everyone as much HP as possible. Except for Titus, he's in a bit of a unique situation. Firewood. Yeah, Yuna's not going to survive much. I do wonder if it's worth giving her an extra 5% would really make a difference. I'm just thinking, is that the difference between surviving a cross-cleave and not? Defense 18, 29, 24, 24, 11. I think her defense is so low that even with that she might not. But let's have a look. I think it's one X potion if I remember correctly. Hmm. I'm going to save and see how much that takes our HP to. If it's over 2,500, then maybe I'll go for it. I mean, is magic defense plus 5% better than... Oh, wait, no, sorry. Different. Nah. 2,501. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll keep it for this battle. Um, that's fine. So I think I'm not going to bother with five times cheer and all that shit. 
Uh... Yeah, the agility gap is, is high enough that I want to keep Tidus instead of Kimari for haste and that kind of stuff. Okay. Let's head in and see what we can do here. So remember to change to Survivor once the battle starts. I think I'll notice pretty fast if I haven't, but still. I don't think MP's going to be a problem. I might as well nab some extra remedies. Remedies and shremedies. So even this tiny little bit here, you, you average two encounters before you get to Flux. So I can start the battle a little bit quicker this time, I think. Because I won't have to mess around with, you know, does this status work, does that status work, etc. I'll probably try and reserve some of the poison fangs for the end as well. When it's like time to just unload as much damage as possible. So we're going to go through this scene again. I think I'll save state at the start of this one, just so that I don't have to... I don't have to watch this again. Okay, here we go. Take two. To be honest, I got so close in take one, I really wasn't expecting that. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly hopeful about my chances. Now, uh, how should I begin? Again, we, we still have the problem of, like, death and all that kind of stuff, but I feel like I should do something to to speed things up from the start so I can rattle through this damage as quickly as possible. Before anything else, let's just switch here to this. Just wondering how best to... Do I play it as if, like... I should be offensively attacking and maybe Auron avoids some of these um, some of these deaths and he ends up doing a lot of damage or should I just use Riku to do damage instead? I'm not sure. I am not sure at the moment. Cause I could I could use this overdrive and then Auron would just Auron could just die in the next move. And it would have been for nothing. So I'm not too sure. Gonna I think I'll probably go for the Super Mighty G again. Now that I think about it. Cause I will get a second overdrive eventually and then I can go attacking with that when it's like close to the end. Well, Mighty G. I think even Mighty G is enough. I don't need more than that. Right. Uh... Alright, here we go. It's Auron that got hit first. Nice. Pretty bad start. Uh, Alright, let's get going. Oh yeah, we had to use some fucking... aims. I mean, you never know. Aura might survive long enough, so we might as well try and give him the cheers and aims. If we get lucky, it'll be worth it. Okay, no one slumbered yet. 
I think like three aims was enough to have him hitting pretty much all the time. It's amazing how much difference it makes. So now I just gotta remember if it was cross cleave after Demi or before. If cross cleave was the next one or was it the demoralized move? So you can see he's doing nice damage here. Uh, let's try and get some of that elixir back. And this should give Titus enough to survive Cross Cleaver. I think Cross Cleaver is the final one, so it should be, yeah, Demoralize next. I still don't remember if I found out what this exactly was. But whatever. Um. I'll see if I can get him poisoned. The first one I did. Okay, that's good. So I won't be using any more poison fangs until basically near the end. Uh, I do kind of want to see how um, how cross cleave is going to work. I do kind of want to see if the Ronso, if the talk still works. So we'll guide Gibari's spear. He sounds like his nose is blocked a bit here. Now I don't know if this actually manifests or not, but we'll have to see. Um, I can get another HP plus 20 if I can steal another elixir. I think it might be worth it. Yeah. Okay. Come and get me. So we'll try and keep Auron out when it's uh, when it's going to be Lance of Atrophy time to try and protect him. So yeah, now we'll bring in some people that are a bit more disposable, for lack of a better term. Uh, Because there's a good chance that someone's going to die here. It's fine. I guess it's better that she dies sooner rather than later. <sighs> Look at that alchemy goodness. So death there. And then Spire of Death. Worst comes to worst, we'll Mega Phoenix. Okay. Uh, Oren, come back. Oren, fuck shit up. Ah. Not quite ready for that yet. We'll let Kimari take the, the peaceful slumber. Okay. Tech jerk. So at least with the cheers, he'll still be doing near 2,000 damage, which is not too bad at all. Let's fix this zombie problem.
Oh yeah, I wonder if alchemy works on ethers. That's actually interesting. That's something I can test. That will be good to know. Right. Okay, still a good 2,000 coming in here from, the, from that attack. So at least damage output-wise, I'm feeling a bit better here. So even despite haste, he's still not going to get a turn before cross cleave. Wow, that's bad. Um, that is bad. Okay. Look at that! Like no one's getting any turns. Sheesh. Okay. Uh. Alchemy doesn't work with these kind of items, right? When I'm throwing these. I'm pretty sure it shouldn't. Okay, cross cleave coming next. And I think because of the Lance of Atrophy, I think he got delayed. So there's a chance he could get hit here, which would be really annoying. Uh, yeah. Not much I can do about this. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. Hold on. Has he got darkness? What? Since when does it give you darkness? I didn't even see that happen once. Anyway, uh, just got to hope here. One in three chance. You always need a bit of luck with these things. Okay, got a bit of luck. Okay. Uh... So I think we restore him to full HP with this. So I hope you're seeing why the survivor is worth 97,000 gil. There you go. Demi is next, so... Again, I'll keep Riku out there. Or is it Peaceful Slumber next? Oh shit, it's Peaceful Slumber next. I made a mistake. But that's fine. We'll manage. So you go. You missed that turn order. You just put yourself in potentially big danger. Phoenix down. Yeah. Go in. Okay. Um. Cross cleave coming next. I'm just wondering if I should try and get five times focus on Aura now. Is that would that even make a difference? Would it be enough? 
Uh, it might be. But getting it five times on him is probably going to be tough. I'll probably just tough it out and try and do it without. Just try and decide what the best course of action would be in this situation. Because he's lost his five times cheer as well. I should be able to get everyone surviving cross cleave now. And just hope that Kimari gets hit with the atrophy. Okay. I am curious about Kimari's strength increase, that's something I've got to remember. Now is probably a decent time to do it. I think she can survive cross cleave because her defense is very high. I feel like the odds of Auron getting hit again here are a bit low. Yeah. Not quite for Kimari. Now you see, got that extra move again. So cross cleave must have a delay on everybody. That's the only thing I can think of here. Yeah, that's a bad outcome. So we're going to have to kind of build him up again now that that's happened. That's a shame. I'm going to Google if there's a way to remove Doom because I really forget. I'm about 95% sure there isn't, but it's worth a check. Yeah, you definitely cannot remove Doom. It's it's quite literally the end, unfortunately. Um, So since he's going to die, we're just going to have to wait it out here. Wait for him to die, then build him up again. Peaceful Slumber is definitely a very Seymour attack name, I have to say. Alright, Kimari got hit this time. That's fine. Uh, let's wake him up. Wow. Go critical, why don't you? So, I mean, right now I'm just going to wait because while Oren's in this state, I'm wondering if I should just kill him. I probably can't even do it. Because this is just wasting my time right now. I'm just wasting time and resources with him being alive. Uh. Oh wow, he's got Protect as well. He ain't dying anytime soon. <laughs> Shit. Oh yeah, let's see the strength here, actually. Mm, yeah, okay, he's had a strength boost. It's nothing crazy, but it's definitely there. Next up is demoralize, then it's cross cleave. Oh shit, we're already on the. Damn, that happened fast! That happened at a really bad time again. <laughs> shit. Yeah, this is. This attempt's gonna fail. I really didn't think I'd done enough damage for that. Shit. Well, this bloody changed everything, didn't it? Uh.
We're going to have to try and get Auron to survive the first Total Annihilation if we can. And see how we do from there. So, like, if his shell doesn't have that many turns to go, he's probably already going to die. Uh, one thing I might... Oof. It's just such an awkward time for this to happen. I'll use his overdrive because this will stop his second, his next turn from coming more quickly, I think. But then again, this puts him so far down that he will get the next attack after it. I could haste Oren after that, I think. We'll try. We'll see. This just, this was horrible timing. I'm pretty confident about this battle now. If I could have timed this properly, then I think I would have won. Um. Now. Come on, don't crash on me now. Okay. Oh, even with haste, he's so far down that... It's going to be irrelevant. Wow. I didn't think it was that bad. I did not think the situation was that bad. At least as a test of how much can he survive. It'll be good to know. So yeah, total annihilation is the next move. Um, let's throw in another focus, I think, while I'm here. There's a small chance he could make it, but I don't fancy his chances at all here. Because the next move is Flareger, so if he's the only one left and Seymour gets the move, he's just gonna he's gonna have to take a Flareger as well, and obviously he can't do that. So death is about 99% certain here. Seriously, that Doom hit him at such a bad time. But let's see. I think he's had a couple of focuses as well on top. 693. 747704. Yeah, it made a massive difference. He still won't survive the, uh, the Flareger. Yeah. Okay, that's no problem. This is a very niche case scenario. That's not going to happen too often. Okay. That's fine. Should be getting it on the next turn unless I get unlucky. I am wondering if for this battle I'm better off using Kimari because he's got extra strength. So it'd be like a double... It'd be a two-pronged attack this way. He might be the better option. We'll try it like this for this battle and we'll see how we do. It's just it's just the fact that there's no doom proof, it just it changes everything. So basically we just gotta make sure that Auron doesn't get hit with death hit with death or or doom. I forgot that Kimari didn't have first strike. That wasn't a good idea. Okay, hopefully for the last time. Okay, let's try again. Uh, survivor. Get Kimari in here. He's going to be the new secondary... Uh, attacker. 
Don't to talk just yet. Focus on Auron for now. I'm going to mix Hyper Null this time because things like Shell and Protect you can get that in like one move and really it's only Auron that needs it. So we'll just we'll deal with it. I think Shining Thorn, two of those is enough. So we have to hope that this doesn't hit Oren. Or we might as well just start again. Okay. I mean, it's not ideal because I'd like Kimari to do damage as well, but just gotta live with it. He got Zombie and Darkness. He's been getting both of them regularly. Okay. I do like the animation for this. I really do. Okay. Start kicking butt. and get my two elixirs back. I'm going to try and use Kimari to haste people up again. Okay. So I think after Demoralize, Auron's really going to start missing. Gonna get Auron out there before cross cleave. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to think when it really matters, like when we get down to the Flareger stage um, and Total Annihilation, Tyze is not going to be able to use his counter attack anyway. He'll just die every time, so switching weapon is not really going to help here, so fuck it. So just keeping Auron away from this whole situation. It's not working out well for him. Wow, he got hit with both. So, because yeah, it uses these three attacks in a row, if Auron is there for cross cleave, then he's going to be in trouble. Um, okay, let's get him back in. Speaking of the devil. He hasn't spoken yet. You have anchored Kimari. The spirits of the Ronso will guide Kimari's spear. Kimari's spear. Okay, that's good. Um, did I steal an elixir already? I did. Okay. I need one more. Might as well try now. Basically, when, when Seymour goes into Total Annihilation mode, I realistically need a Riku Overdrive as well. Because that's like, that's about 10,000, almost 10,000 more damage I can do in that situation. So, I feel like I do need it. 
Orin's hitting consistently this time. I think it's the, the Hyper Null Orb that's, that's made the difference. Come on, Riku. Get that steal. Ah. There's Demi coming next anyway. Oh. I'm doing this so that... Okay, no one's got haste. Yeah, I gave Kimari the potion as well, so he takes a bit of extra damage from Demi. Gives Riku a tiny bit more overdrive. Uh... Texture comes pretty quick, man. Moralize. And the cleave is launching soon. Ah, Kimari doesn't have enough HP to survive it either. Let's use someone who does, I was going to say, but... Actually, I think two high potions will be enough, yeah. Okay, let's get Auron out. Lulu should be fine with cross cleave. Ugh. She's so slow. Luna's defense being 11 worries me. How shall we do this? I think her magic defense increases when she speaks, but not to an extent where she's going to be able to tank anything, because she can't double up on HP anyway. Uh, I really don't think she can survive it. I guess we'll just let someone die. I'll throw caution to the wind and see if Kimari can survive with 2100. Defend with Yuna. See how we do. Because I know that Yuna can survive the cross, um, that the Lance of Atrophy as well, if she manages it. Ooh, Kimari just about died. That's unfortunate. Alrighty. Um... Now, I've got to remember, I think it's... Stay in the game. Ah. Doom is worse because it just always makes things so much more unpredictable. Got Slumber coming next. I think I might let Titus and Kimari both die from that and maybe Mega Phoenix them. It's, it's a consideration I'm willing to make. Kimari won't die from it, that's the thing.
He's definitely doing a lot more damage than Titus is. Only trouble is if Auron goes to sleep here, it's going to get a bit dangerous, but whatever. It's just a nasty situation right now. And Oren did go to sleep. <laughs> okay. Um. Phoenix down. I think I'll use a Mega Potion with her on this next round just so I can get people back up to speed. I'm just going to toss the Mega Potion, it'll just make my life a lot easier. I'm in a good position right now, so I think I need to start capitalizing. I can leave Titus in for the Cross Cleave. Haste her back up again. Okay. Here we go. Realistically, she needs at least like over halfway or something. Okay. There we go. That's a good result. That is a good result. Uh. Okay, I don't think it matters too much who gets hit here, but Kumari would be the worst choice. Okay. Right. Look at that, look at the boss getting two turns in a row, what a bastard. I think Oren slowed back down again. I've got to speed him up. Right, I think the slumber is coming next. Mm -hmm. 
It's funny, the person who gets hasted doesn't it doesn't feel like look at this. I've casted haste on Auron and his turn is still two turns behind. It's weird like that. It's almost it almost feels like the person who gets hasted initially has like a penalty for being hasted and then it's different or something. I don't know. I don't think that's true, but that's just what it feels like. Okay, Slumberino. Okay, that's not too bad. With alchemy, like even high potions just become a, a viable way of, of healing. It just makes such a difference. Warren hasn't been getting a turn for weeks. Okay. I think another cross cleave or two, and I think we're probably ready to push it to the final form. We can just keep Warren alive. There we go, that's the elixir I wanted. So Demoralize has some kind of delay, man. That's not how it normally is. Anyway, luckily we've got enough HP to deal with it, but... It's a sneaky move. Just uh, by 6 HP he missed out, but that's fine. Uh, we'll manage. Okay. Tide Deuce. Yeah, as you can see, that haste is gone, so I've got to get it back. See who we're going to get hit with this time. Okay. Fair. Uh, now. Let's get Auron in. I think I'm going to start really making some moves now. I've got a. I'm in a good position, I think. Give Oren the Lunar Curtain and just start really motoring here. Get a few extra cheers in for Kimari, but then again, he's only got four turns left. Uh. Here we go. Got to hope for a bit of luck here and just hope that Auron doesn't fall asleep. Okay, not bad. Riku's going to miss a turn here, but fine. Okay. Still undecided on who to go with here. Um, 
I'm just wondering if it's worth... You know what? I think Riku can survive the, um, the flare, I think. She needs maximum HP, but I think she might be able to survive it, because Auron's magic defense, I think, is worse. And he got hit with 2,700 with Shell and the five times focus. It's closing in on that overdrive. Um, I'm just wondering, do I stick or twist now? Do I stick or twist? Start with that. And she's slowed down. That's a bad time to slow down. Uh, I'm going to start trying to do damage with Reaper as well now. Okay, here we go. Yuna gets a turn here, surely. Don't steal my turn from me. There we go. And now that we have this, I believe we should be able to survive. Okay. Let's be careful here. Pretty certain Auron survives even with this. Let's just have a double check that everyone's got everything they need. Shell. They both have shell, that's the most important thing. If Auron had a little bit more HP, I could have just brought in Kimari and hasted him, but I can't do that. So I'm gonna try and play it absolutely safe here and just do this. Right, here it comes. If Riku can survive this, that's a huge bonus. Okay, that's looking good. That is looking good. Uh, where do we begin? I think hasting Auron is probably a good start. Right, let's go for his overdrive, I think. Ooh, but once I do this, it's like, got no moves left for anything. Uh, just trying to think, is there any other way to get Chocobo Feathers at this stage? Not really, but... It's a really rotten order of turns here. Uh, I'm probably going to have to trust the fact that Auron can survive here. Just have to be so, so careful. I mean, on paper, he's got everything he needs. Okay. Going to give the X potion here to have him in tip-top condition. Okay. Uh... I think Riku has got to be out there though for that um, for that flare. Then again, I can swap her in and do it. I think it might be better to swap her in than risk 
Then again, even if she can't survive Fledger, who the fuck cares? I don't think it's that huge a deal. So I think we still have a turn or two before before it comes. I'm just scared of getting the turns wrong because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking from what I remember boss one that's that's the turn in which total annihilation happens and then I get the next turn in order to recover but if I've made some kind of mistake and there's a delay or something runs out then that means it's a game over so I'm a bit worried in that sense I just want to see Auron survive one total annihilation and then I'm like then, we're, then it feels like we're still in business. I guess this will confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's that boss one move that is the, the correct one. So we'll try to survive this one. Not enough. I thought she might get an extra turn, but it's not the case. Okay. So the turn is coming now. It's one of these annoying situations where it's like, keep Riku out, get an overdrive, don't keep Riku out, and risk not being able to do an extra 10,000 damage, basically. Because if I put someone here as like a, a sacrifice, then I feel like there's a chance that it might not work out as intended. Okay, Oren's still got all the statuses. I feel like if anyone other than Riku gets hit with Flare, then she gets her overdrive. So there's a 2 in 3 chance that she gets her overdrive, but I'm just going to guarantee it. If she dies, she dies. Screw it. At least we get to do another 2,000 odd damage. Here we go. I feel like surely Oren has what it takes to survive this. I'm interested to see what happens to Riku though. I feel like with 3,000 it won't be enough, surely. She survived? Ooh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's so good. Okay. Alright. I think now you're mine, Flux. What the Flux? I smell blood now. There's going to be a Mortis Auction here as well. A nice 4,000 one. Okay. Now, we got a Flare coming. Sorry. Yeah, a Flare coming. So hold on. Let's just check if they've got Shell. If they don't, then there's not much point. So you can see their shell has been completely destroyed. I think at this stage... Mm, without shell, it does about 4,400 to Auron. Auron survives if he doesn't... Just trying to think what's the best plan of action here. Okay. 
I feel like we just we just let um, we just make sure Oren survives this um, I'm just thinking about random variants because he got hit with 2200 if it goes up to like 2400 it won't be enough so for that reason I'm thinking should I use next potion to be absolutely sure and if he runs out of haste during that particular turn then it gets nasty we'll have to see There's too many things to think about right now let's go 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 hit Auron I think from the animation it's Auron that's I think the best result I think at this stage I can do this Okay, still alive. I'm just like, want to be hundred percent sure that this is the, the correct. It's not. To it's not time for total annihilation yet. It shouldn't be. Pretty sure it's not time for total annihilation just yet. If I've miscalculated in total annihilation, I'll be pissed. Okay. Yeah, I know you're ready to annihilate. That's fine. Now. Uh. Luna curtain. Luna Curtain. Okay, attack. Oh, come on, don't miss now. Seriously. Ugh, that's a disgusting time to miss. Here, I think I'm going to Mega Elixir, just because I'm not... If I just had a little more MP, I could have used Haska. Actually, we've got one more turn here. I'm going to use Haska. So, here I'll use a Mega Potion to make sure Ebony Buddy is okay. Let's run a final check. Shell, shell. That's what I need to see. And... Sorry, what am I doing? I've just got to be so careful here. You just put one foot wrong. Whew. That's why Flux is always such an iconic battle in this game. He really does have that, that fear factor. Um, I don't have anything particularly great to use here. I feel like a fire gem isn't going to be that great, surely. Most of this stuff has been nerfed, so it does half damage. Unfortunately, Star Grenade only does damage to one. I'll just do this to get my next turn quicker, I think. And Tidus, give it some pace go. See how we do. Okay, so hopefully this shouldn't be the same thing that happened in the first battle where I took big damage on the second one. Look at the difference though, look. P Birdman's been wiped out. I just love that Riku can just about survive it. 
it makes such a huge difference. But got the second move here. I don't know how, but Okay. Gotta be extremely careful here. Bring out someone quick, like this. This is where agility makes such a difference, as you can see right here. Wait, didn't I use... I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. I'm just wondering if Auron's gonna miss, just like, for the love of God, don't miss. Ready to annihilate already. Okay, things down. Still not there. Uh, I think at this stage it, it doesn't matter who you've got out there really, because Auron's going to be the only one who survives. You just have to hope he doesn't get hit with a flare which he will here, actually. Okay, hold on. Let's let's double check what's going on here. Shell. Let's get Kimari in. He's got his better strength. just not enough. He's just not dying. Come on. We've hit him for like 5,000 something with Auron. We got 6,000 with that plus the multisorption is a basically a 10. We've done well over 20,000 damage since it's been in Annihilation stage. This is horrid. Um... I'm just thinking, I mean, can he survive a Flareger plus a Total Annihilation? And I don't think he can. So that would mean it's game over. Because of the way the turns are structured. So you can see that one after Auron. And then the bosses move. I really thought I had this. But I'm worried now. See, having two people survive was obviously such a, a major difference. But the only reason she could do so was because of the, the five times focus. I have no healing springs. I was thinking, can I put regen on him? And would that make any difference? But it's really... See, like, she can split the turns here, but Oren can't. Unless maybe he does a change weapon, potentially. I don't know. This is so critical. Oren absolutely has to be able to survive here. And again, because there's no sensor, you have no idea how close you are. Like, maybe I'm one hit away and this is all for nothing. I could have just finished it off. Because technically, I can attack twice. So, I mean, I could use Lulu's overdrive here and Tyus's overdrive after. Maybe it's enough, maybe it's not. Like... How much damage could I even do? It depends if I get a multi-sorption or not, as well. There's just so many things to think about. I hate that. To be honest, I've always felt like sensor... It should be here, because it's like, technically, if I really cared enough, I could have my calculator out. And I could have been keeping track the whole time. So you can keep track, it's just a convenience. But then again, I think no one's really going to work with a calculator on these ones, so... It is kind of fair too, but it's just... I do wish that the sensor was there, I really do. Uh, I really don't know.
Okay, that is extremely important. I think I can manage now. Let's just have a, a quick look um, at the situation. Shell. Okay. Right. Okay, let's have it. If he survives this, Mega Phoenix, and then Flare and then I'm, I'm still in the race. Then I think I really have to try and use like Lulu's Overdrive and that kind of thing, otherwise it's just not going to happen. I don't know what kind Oh, my shell ran out. Shell ran out. He just survived. Ah. Oh, my God. Wow, this is intense. Intense AF. Wow, this shell ran out midway through, but not late enough in the in the attack that he could have managed. Holy shit! Wow. That is about as intense as it gets, my friends. Um, again, bringing someone quick here. I did this so I can swap in people with overdrive so I can get one more round of overdrives in from people. Okay. Oren. I mean, you just you just got to get the overdrive in, man. Shoot that mofo in the face. Yeah, overkill as well. That is what I'm talking about. Okay, that was really good. The Seymour battle so far have been really good. I mean, to be honest, the final form, other than Flare was very reminiscent of the original, but because you're a lot more crippled um, due to the P Birdman mod restrictions, like you just saw there, Oren surviving that total annihilation with 400 was clutch because he started off with um, 5,500 with Shell. And normally that's really safe territory and five times focus. And it almost wasn't enough. And stay up there. Yeah. Whew. Boy am I relieved to get through that. Wow. Lulu got nothing. Sorry, Lulu. Yeah, I've been saying to P Birdman, like what's been happening at the moment is kind of been leaving Lulu um a bit obsolete, but whatever. Two more level four key spheres, that's big. And a Nightbringer. I have to see what that is. Okay, I can breathe a, a sigh of relief because that was very, very important. But that's a milestone in any challenge run. And this one was no different. So I'm glad I got it on the third attempt. So let's check out this weapon first. Dark Strike and two free slots. Okay, I mean, you've been seeing that stuff like Dark Buster hasn't been working that great, so I'm not hugely confident on this, but fair enough. Um, we also got something called a Mana Bomb. It's a new... Um, it's a new thing. Wait, I just skipped it there. Damage enemies based on user's own spirit. That's one of them ones I'll probably have to save using a battle, see how good it is, and then reserve it accordingly if it's really good. Now, I have... I can now get both ejector shot and zombie attack. That's good. I just want to see if there's any more level 4s down the road that I could really want. Trust. Sentinel. Yeah, his, his grid ends here, I believe. I still don't think we have any level 3s, so he's stopping us from, from breaking out with any kind of ease. She skipped this, which gave her copycat, which is definitely interesting. I'm considering saving a level 4 for that, because she's not too far away from it. But she needs 3 level 4s to get to... Is that full life? Yeah, don't need that. She's an alchemist, yo. She don't need that. 
double cast. Oof. It's protected by five level four spheres. So not a huge amount of options in terms of level four key spheres here. Should end with this. Triple foul. Yeah. Okay, people are making strides towards the end of their grids. Now, what about here? Ah, it's level 3 in the way. Tidus. Yeah, there's no other level 4s. Okay, so the choice is to either get Ejector Shot and Zombie Attack, or... Oh, wait, actually, we can, we can do all three. We can get Copycat. And we can get... Okay, that works. So... I think I'll begin here. He's going to have plenty of MP now as well. To use stuff like zombie attack. Because I'm assuming zombie attack is going to be pretty expensive. But it'd be nice for him to have. So we've got to backtrack a little bit with some of these grids. Osmos is coming soon for Waka, which will be nice. I wish you could entrust MP to others. That would have been nice, but... More MP for Titus is good. And strength. Cool. He's going to have a second one soon, which is even better. Okay. Good stuff. Just making sure nothing crazy happens. I always get a bit paranoid after a long boss battle. There shouldn't be any encounters here, but just... I don't know, man. <laughs> Where was that chest? There it is. This one I always remember. The Saturn Crest. Okay. So, yes, my friends, I will be ending the session and saving here because it's definitely been a pretty epic one. Um, I'm just thinking, do I do I need to backtrack to once and get some more high potions and stuff? Because, again, I'm not going to have access to a shop for a very long time. So I feel like that's something that might be worth doing. So maybe pilfer some gill along the way and get to once one more time because I'm just trying to recall... We've got Sanctuary Keeper to come at the top of Gagazette, which, I mean, can always be a very challenging battle as well. So, yeah, I feel like it's probably wise to... I've only got 12 left. Can you customize something with the Mana Bomb? Let's have a look. So, Star Grenades give you half MP cost, which is nice, but... You need a lot of them. Yeah, so it seems that mana bombs cannot be used in customization from what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. Just one final rundown in case I, I've missed it and I've been silly. Yeah, definitely not. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head back to once. And um, we'll probably pick the next session up from here. Thankfully, he's not too far down. So it's, it's not the end of the world. I definitely think getting that survivor made a big difference. I am a bit gutted that I didn't wait a bit longer to to use the return sphere. Like the flexible arm is great, but I should have saved it for that. Alchemy plus first strike is always one of the best things because I'm not expecting evade encounter anytime soon. <laughs> 